Uh, thanks for joining us today for Wisdom in the Word, September 21st. I appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your morning. Uh, so today we're going to talk about Proverbs uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. So I'll go ahead and read those. The Word of the Lord says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commandments within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He holds victory in store for those upright. He is a shield to those who walk in blameless for he guards the course of the just and he protects the way of his faithful ones. So obviously, as you figured out from the passage, it's about wisdom. Uh, Wisdom, Leonardo da Vinci said, wisdom is the daughter of experience. So it's kind of interesting to think of it. Um, But what I like to do is take this verse and break it down into two smaller primary parts, uh, if you will. So the first, the first four verses, uh, I'll call that the if you verses. So if you accept God's word or receive God's word, if you store up God's commandments or in another version, treasure up God's commandments, if you turn your ear to wisdom And if you apply your heart to understanding. So if we receive or accept God's word, we have it in our hearts. Uh, We make it a part of who we are. We spend enough time studying to where it really becomes real to us. And we recognize the ultimate power that it has. Uh, If we store up God's commandments, we put them somewhere safe that we can access them in a moment's notice. Uh, Those moments we need to be reminded of the context of his commandments. Uh, I like to look at it as maybe we're storing it up like a squirrel stores up nuts for the winter. He does that to survive. So if if we're storing the Lord's commandments up, then, then we store them up to survive those moments where we're tested, where we're confronted with something that's difficult. Uh, Food for our soul, if you will. In the ESV Bible translation, the words treasure up God's commandments are used. So if you think about treasure, most of us would think of uh, jewels, gold, silver. Uh, In this case, it's God's commandments or the way he directs us to live our lives. Store up, treasure up, we hold on to them because they represent to us the truth of God's word for our lives. Now, as we turn our ear to wisdom, we're choosing where and from whom we will seek wisdom. This implies, number one, that we're attentive and obedient. Uh, that, uh, that requires us to do that in order to turn our ear to that wisdom. Applying our heart to understanding, that requires us to think about God's what God's word is saying to us and what it means. Using the Holy Spirit as our guide, because he really is our guide in this whole situation. The minute you open up the Bible, the Holy Spirit is going to help you understand what's going on and guide us in that. So what really what Solomon's saying in verses 3 and 4 is that if we want wisdom... We must accept the Bible or the word of God and learn his commandments. We must have an ear for understanding and set our hearts to receive it. We must also be willing to cry out for wisdom and pursue wisdom like a great treasure. If you think about it, what do we really pursue in life? What are the things that we pursue? What's most important? Um, you know, none of us get that right all the time, by the way, certainly not me. Um, sometimes I pursue things, TV shows or stuff that's just a waste of my time, but uh, that's the way it goes. But we can pursue God's word and it will not come back to us void. It will, it will, uh, it'll help us. It'll encourage us. It'll equip us 
once those commandments are in there, when we have those moments, uh, it'll equip us. So that's the, that is the if you portion. The second part I call is the then you will. So if we do the first part, this is what we get out of the deal, basically. So part two if is then you will. So if we do all the first part, we get to understand the fear of the Lord. Now, that's a little complex. The fear of the Lord always has me, it's always, always kind of given me a little bit of trouble. Um, a loving reverence for God that includes submission to his lordship and to the commands of his word. So in other words, we accept the fact that God is in control, that God is Lord, and that he's in charge. And if we disobey, then we may get some consequences. Um, that his word is true and that we should follow it. Uh, the second, find the knowledge of God. So knowing knowing who God is and understand, understanding that he is teaching us. So that's uh, when we read, when we really absorb, when we're attentive to the word of God, he's constantly teaching us in everything. And I know you've had an experience. I know I certainly have. Say you, you have a verse that you read in the morning and and you think, hmm, that's interesting. And then about two hours later, bam, something hits you. And you're like, wow, I can't believe I read that this morning in my devotional. And here I am faced with that right now. That's what we're talking about. That That's the the, the power and, the, and the, the, the impact that the Word of God can have. So find the knowledge of God. Obtain sound wisdom from God. Remember, we're seeking wisdom in this passage so we're getting that wisdom from God. The wisdom we can receive can change the way we live our day-to-day -day lives and certainly how we deal with those around us. You think about Solomon, you think about all the stories about how wise he was. And, and I think about the story of the child where the two women were fighting over the child. And he said, no problem, just get my sword and uh, just I'll just cut him right in half. Which, which, which one of the mothers said, no, 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 it's okay, she can have him right? The real mother. So that's wisdom. That's the kind of wisdom that we all desire to, to be able to, to discern. And, and that's neat. But anyway, that's, that's what we can get out of this deal. Is we can slowly but surely, we can develop wisdom. We can gain wisdom. We can receive God's protection. You see, God holds victory in store for the upright. Uh, he is a shield to those who walk blamelessly. Of course, the only way we're able to be seen as blameless, blameless is after we're washed by the blood of Jesus. That, of course, uh, is, is it's impossible for any of us to be seen as blameless. Uh, we're just dirty little sheep, as Eugene used to say. Um, but the, the thing is, if you put this, this whole thing together, God's word tells us that if we accept the word, Accept his word, store, it, store up his commandments, turn your ear to wisdom, and apply our hearts to understanding. If we cry out to him for understanding and search for it like it's a treasure, we'll be faithful, he will be faithful to provide us with understanding, wisdom, and protection. He'll, he'll make us better. He'll make us better. This is a daily proposition for all of us, and I'm at the front of the line there. It's not something that you're going to attain this side of heaven necessarily, but it's important to, to strive for that. It's important to reach for that. Um, you know, we wake up in the morning and every day is a clean slate and we have an opportunity to, 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 to start it right. So if we seek out God's wisdom through his word, you can't go wrong. And, uh, I think once you start, it becomes a, becomes a habit becomes a daily thing and it, and it becomes really important. So I want to finish with Philippians, Philippians 3, 12 through 14. And I think this really kind of sums it up what we're talking about. Not that I've already obtained all this or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, 
forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, straining towards what is ahead and press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heaven, heavenward in Christ Jesus. If we all looked at it that way, if we all saw it as a day-to-day press on towards the goal, let's do that, shall we? Uh, let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the Apostle, the Apostle Paul as he, uh, as he encourages us. Thank you for the, the wisdom scripture in Proverbs. I pray that a little bit of that would seep through, that, it, that we would seek your counsel. Uh, we would pay attention to your commandments. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to, to make those little changes day by day and to, to mature and develop into the Christians, into the, the, into the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ, because that's really what it's about. That's what we're striving towards is to be more like Jesus. Help us to do that today, Lord. And I thank all of you for joining, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.